Um, thank you. Um, in that case, I think you recommended 60 years, is that right? Y yes, I believe okay. so. Uh, why not life? Um, those, I believe, were the guideline, beyond the guideline. I think it was consecutive sentences on multiple counts. I believe production of child pornography carries 30 year maximums. So I believe we were, we couldn't have asked for life based on okay. the statutes. All right. Uh, are you familiar with the Carpentino case? I am, Senator. Okay. And this involves a man uh, who was accused and convicted of raping a disabled 14 year old. Uh, who is deaf, I believe. Does that ring a bell? Uh, not deaf, but hearing impaired. Hearing certainly. impaired. But disabled, right? 14-year-old? 14-year-old, hearing okay. impaired. And the person that raped her had previously served 13 years for sexually abusing other minors. Is that correct? I don't know if it was 13 years. I, I take your word. He did serve a prior sentence for a state sex offense. Against minors? I believe so. Okay. And you recommended 405 months, is that correct? I, I believe so, and I think he, the judge sentenced him slightly lower than that. Yeah. Okay. There's a note in a memo here. The sentence requested here will incapacitate the defendant until he is in his 60s. Hopefully by that time, the danger the defendant presents will have subsided. Did you write that? Either I or my colleague did. Well, it was given under your name, I, I, your office. I, I, I understand what you're... Is it your testimony before this committee that uh, you age out in terms of being a sexual predator against children? Um, I think that certainly that um, there's an argument that as you get older in age that that that's possible. That was certainly a guideline sentence that we requested in that case, which is a, a what, very long What sentence. information do you have to suggest that was possible? Um, so, look, it, it is challenging to predict what's going to happen to someone 400. Don't you months think the past that? is the best indication of the future? The man <laughs> was served 13 years in jail, got out, raped a 14 year old girl, and you believe that if he got to his 60s, it probably be okay. And he received a very long sentence. Well, uh, the point is, uh, can you give me an information about some, some source that says that over time, your propensity to do this to children goes down? I think there's some evidence that... Uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fonza, is that right? Fonza, did I get it right? Fonza, yes. Yeah, thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> you did legal work for Huawei, is that correct? I did. Uh, when I was in private practice yeah. uh, a number of years ago, I did okay. a small amount of work okay. at the best of my So time. it's the, pretty well the policy of the United States to tell our allies uh, that if you buy Huawei technology, we're not going to do business with you because we think Huawei is an extension of the Communist Party and it would get into all of our data and it would be a national security threat. We've actually told allies if you join Huawei, we're going to shut down sharing with you. Are you familiar with that? I'm aware of some of the work the United States government Based on there. what you know about Huawei, is that sound policy? Uh, Senator, I think... I did a small amount of work for Huawei a number of years no, ago. No, that's not my yeah. question. Is I mean, you, 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 know, you did a small amount of work for Huawei. I'm not holding your client against yeah. you. I just want to understand, yeah. do you know who you're representing here? Yeah. I, I mean, Huawei is considered by our government a threat. So if, you, a foreign, if you're an ally of the United States and you buy the Huawei systems, we're going to shut down sharing information. That's, that's the policy that I support. Does that make sense to you, given what you know about Huawei? Senator, I've, uh, a lot of time has passed since I, since yeah. I represented Huawei. Things have changed. I, think, I have no reason to second guess the, the, the policy of the United States in this ground. And I think okay. more importantly for my current role is for the role well, of the Well, during your before. time representing them, did, did the way they do business give you any concerns along those lines? 
You know, I mean, it was. A, I mean, Huawei is owned by the Communist Party, basically, right? Senator, I, I, I can't remember uh, my thinking at the time. Yeah. What I can say is that OLC is, is not a policymaking office. Yeah, and I got you. Uh, uh, the Hong Kong Trade Development Council. Um, so you're familiar with those folks, right? <laughs> I did, I did, I, much yeah. like Huawei, I did a small yeah. amount of work for them. Yeah, so uh, during 2019, the government of Hong Kong uh, went hard against pro-democracy protesters um, and the Hong Kong Trade Development Council uh, seems to be uh, behind the, the governor of Hong Kong, whatever you call the guy. Uh, did you ever say anything to them about what's going on in terms of this will not good? Senator, my, my work for the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, much like my work for Huawei, was done at the request of other partners, and no, I, 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 know, I had that. no interaction with I mean, with everybody it. deserves a lawyer. I mean, trust me, I've represented people I don't agree with. That's, that's not the point. The yeah. point is, it seems to me that during 2019 was a crucial time for democracy in Hong Kong. And that was the time where I would expect people to stand up and be counted, um, not provide comfort. So... Did you ever, or anybody in your firm, ever suggest to the Chinese Hong Kong Trade Council that what you're doing is going to put you on the wrong side of the United States and out of line with international law? I can't speak for everyone in my firm. I, I had no direct interaction with them. So, okay. I, I, thank you very much. Thank you.